All right, so this last video is just going to show off a couple pieces of miscellany that might be pretty nice for you to know. Um, just showing off some stuff from A11.1 and A11.3. All right, so now what I have here is this application that actually takes in that same courses database we worked with before, and it calculates the total number of hours completed by this particular student. Now, hours completed would be hours for which a student uh, finished a class and got a letter grade. A W in this case would not count. So what we would expect is 3, 6, 9, 12, 14 hours, which is what we end up getting out of total hours completed. Now you might have remembered that with all of these uh, fields right here, none of them were allowed to be null or empty, except for the grade field right here, because we wanted to be able to talk about grades uh, where a student hasn't actually or sorry, classes that a student hasn't actually finished yet and thus has not received a grade for. So for example, if I typed in CBiz112 um, and then I'll just type in visual basic here and three hours, but I don't put a grade because we haven't actually completed this class yet, just so only on chapter 11. I recalculate the hours and it doesn't look like anything's changed, but a new calculation has been done and the hour Total hours completed has not changed. I could just put a D in here and then change that to a 17 and then remove that D and then change it to a 14 and show you that that's the result of me putting that in. And that's what I did. But uh, that's what we end up, that's what we end up getting right there is this um, uh, application that can take everything in the database, check to see if the grade is valid and if it's not, and if it is valid, then add the number of hours to the results. And here's the code that does that. So the way you can actually iterate through all the records is you can do a for each loop, uh, row as my courses data set, which is the actual data set that has all your data, dot courses row. This is sort of a uh, list of all of the rows in your data set, or at least it acts like one, but you know, you use the name of your data set here, and then the uh, courses row right here. This would just be the name of the table, and then row at the very end, and that gives you that kind of collection of all the courses like that. In, uh, oh sorry, this is the type. My apologies. All of this is the type. In my courses data set dot courses dot rows. So that's how you would do that. Just substituting out all the names for your table, or sorry, for your database and your table for their proper names right here. But if you do those proper substitutions, then that's how you would actually do a for each loop and get the row out of that. Now, in this case, we're checking to make sure that the, the grade is valid. So it has to be A, B, C, D, or F, but it cannot be empty and it cannot be a W, right? And the way we can check if a grade or if a particular cell is not empty is we check uh in this case it's row but uh is grade null and you would do this for any um field like whatever field you're interested in so if we had our title field if that was allowed to be null we could do is title null or something like that um of course uh the is code null is title null is ours null because we don't allow them to be null, then all of that will always be false. It's going to just be like false for all of them. Um, but because grade can be null, we do have to use this is grade null function right here, which then evaluates, you know, row dot is grade null. That's a method that evaluates to, if that evaluates to false, and that means that the student has actually either completed the class or withdrawn. If it's true, then they have not completed the class. So we can use and also right here to short, sort of short circuit evaluation and skip over this uh, if statement right here. But we also want to use this, the short circuit evaluation right here because if we check to make sure that it's uh, is grade null is equal to false and it ends up being true. If this is grade null is true, which means that this whole thing right here is false, then that means the actual grade value is null, and then we don't want to check if rate, 
row dot grade is equal to anything or not equal to anything or anything like that because asking if null is equal to something that actually causes an error so we, we definitely don't want to do that so that's why we do this is grade null check first see if it's equal to false if it's true we skip if it's false we continue uh thanks to the power of short circuit evaluation then we check if the grade is a w if it is a w we skip if it's not a w then based on how we've set everything up, we know that it is valid. So therefore, you know, the grade must be valid, which means that the student has actually completed the class, which means that we can add the number of hours for this, you know, credit hours for this particular class to the total of completed credit hours right here. So that's just how you would do it. You would, you get the rows. The type is uh, the name of your table or sorry, the name of your data set, which is usually table data set uh, dot, and then the uh, subtype, I guess, right here, this courses row thing. Um, this would just be the name of your actual table and then the, the word row after that. In the name of your data set again, dot courses, which is the name of the table in this case, um, dot rows, Check if, if, for this particular problem, we check if this uh, grade field is null, and then we check if the grade field is a w, and then if everything is good, we just add the uh, row dot hours to the total. So that's how you would do this particular calculation, but this is sort of the format for how to set up a for loop so you can iterate through a database like this. This is the format for how you would, um, you know, check to see if certain fields or certain cells are null, if a certain records field is null, and then all the other stuff going on here. So yeah, that's a very useful thing to know for how to calculate things using a database. All right, so that is all for databases this week. Uh, next week, like I mentioned before, we have just a little bit of database work left, but other than that, you know, it's, it's just databases from here on out, but that's, you know, this is all we're covering for this week.